thank you for joining us this afternoon and a very warm welcome to the first virtual reception in Copenhagen for St. Patrick's Day. This is the second occasion when we've had to put on hold most of our traditional events that we have organised in the past to celebrate one of the most important dates in any Irish person's calendar and certainly one of the most important dates for any Irish embassy throughout the world. And here in Copenhagen we have had of course, the Embassy Reception, which is the largest event that we host, which is not, was not possible to go ahead with. We have the St. Patrick's Day Parade, which has given pleasure to so many people over the years. And perhaps rather unique in Copenhagen, we also had the Three-Legged Race, which has done so much to raise money for charity over the years. And when we postponed these in 2020, we had hoped that it would be possible to resume them later in the year. Unfortunately, the pandemic lasted rather longer than most of us had thought. And there were also very necessary measures that were required in order to stop the spread of the virus and to save lives. I know this has been a very challenging, difficult year for all of us and has had a significant impact on our daily lives. In Copenhagen and Denmark generally, it has meant that we have been unable to meet with friends and loved ones as we would normally do. It has also meant that we have not been able to travel to Ireland to see families. And while it is true that we've been able to use a modern technology to get the news of what's happening at home and updates from what's going on, that is no substitute for physical interaction and personal contact. Over the last year in the Embassy, we've also been very saddened by the loss of two Danish friends who have done so much over the years for Danish-Irish relations and are well known and loved in the Irish community generally. Klaus Haberman passed away in the summer of last year. Klaus was an extremely talented artist. And he told me when I met him that in, since 1968, he'd been spending six months of each year on Sherkin Island off the southwest coast of Ireland. He wrote a book of his experiences there, Island Tales, first published in Danish and more recently published in English. And certainly recommend it if you haven't come across it to have a read of it. He also donated his works to the National Gallery, as well as to the Richmond Barracks in Dublin. And unfortunately, about a month ago, we also lost John Christensen. John was the respected and highly regarded chairman of the James Joyce Society here in Copenhagen. And he had an immense knowledge of Irish history, culture, and especially literature. And John told us that he had been in Ireland more than 40 times. And it was clear from our conversations that he not only knew Ireland, but he understood us so well. This year, because of the difficult circumstances, we decided that we could not leave St. Patrick's Day unmarked. And so we got together with our colleagues in the Department of Foreign Affairs and other agencies in Dublin to try to put together a series of virtual events on the diverse cultural experience that Ireland normally represents at this time of the year, and also showcases. And we hope that you will enjoy many of the performances that you'll find on these links. Because it is through the links of arts and culture that we unite the diaspora across the world on a day like today. And it is also arguably the case that, our, that arts and culture are the greatest gift that Ireland has, apart from her people, the greatest gift that we have given to the world, which has helped us to forge so many links with many nations. We also remember St. Patrick, a migrant, whose life was often one of hardship, but also reflected a sense of resilience in adversity and optimism for the future. As we emerge from a very difficult year, with a new hope for the upcoming spring, born of the development and production of new vaccines, let us try to summon that spirit of adversity and optimism. And in the words of the, of the Nobel laureate, Seamus Heaney, if we winter this one out, we can summer anywhere. As you all know, um, there has been a long-standing tradition of government ministers to visit our diaspora at this time of the year. Unfortunately, this tradition has also been affected by the pandemic. But I want to reassure you that you are not forgotten. And I have an important message from Dublin. And it is with great pleasure and, and a huge privilege for me to introduce a message from Antishuk Mihalmar. Thank you, Ambassador. And I would like to wish you and everyone in Denmark a very happy St. Patrick's Day. 
a cardigal is a cardigal layer. Los Pesilta e la ela podrig, the gach gael sawaya nu har lar. St. Patrick's Day is a special day, a day when no matter where in the world we are, we celebrate our heritage and culture. So let me begin by wishing you all a happy St. Patrick's Day to our 70 million strong diaspora and our many friends across the globe. This has been a difficult year for our Irish community abroad. Many of you have lost loved ones. You have been unable to spend time with family and friends. You have missed Christmas, birthdays, weddings, and sadly, even funerals. I want in particular to acknowledge and thank the many Irish who have helped lead the fight against COVID-19, our dedicated health workers at home, but also the many Irish doctors and nurses research scientists and public health officials around the world. Many of you have put yourselves and your families at risk so that others might be safe. But now, at last, we can look forward to better days. St. Patrick's Day is our day, but that doesn't mean it is only for us. St. Patrick's Day is an open-hearted invitation to a global expression of community. It's a day that gives us a unique opportunity to speak to the world about who we are and how we can contribute to the well-being of humanity. There is, I believe, an ambition that we all now share, that we will learn from what has happened and that our responses will reflect both our interconnectedness and our interdependence. Just as the pandemic has brought out the best in us, we can use the same instincts to shape the future, bringing new meaning and values to our lives and to our role in the world. We are Irish, but we are also global citizens. COVID-19 has reminded us that we need global solutions and international cooperation for global challenges, that no nation, large or small, can meet these challenges on their own. St. Patrick's Day is an opportunity for us, this year especially, to express that sense of solidarity. Ireland is an open country, an outward-facing place. Irish people have always sought to make a contribution wherever they have gone. The same wish to serve inspires us now. We will work with partners around the world to overcome the dreadful pandemic and to support economic and social recovery. In doing so, we will work to make sure that nobody especially the poorest parts of the world, gets left behind. We've taken up a seat on the UN Security Council for the next two years, and we will use that position to work for peace and security throughout the world to the very best of our ability. We will continue to reach out a hand of friendship and hopefully, when we can, to welcome people back to Ireland, including those of you that have been unable to visit in recent times. As Irish people down the ages have done, we will try to make a difference every day, no more so than here on our island. As we approach the centenary of the foundation of our state, building on the achievement of the Good Friday Agreement, we will work through our shared island initiative to underpin peace and to advance the cause of reconciliation, shaping a better future for all the people. Our history, our culture, our values and our experience place us in a position to do great good in the world. There is an Irish saying, is there ska a chéle a varan nadini? We live in each other's shadow. It speaks to our sense of interdependence, of community and solidarity. Let that be our message on this special day for the global Irish. And so to conclude, we are thinking of you all today as you celebrate throughout the world. We are looking forward to welcoming you all home soon. Until then, Verbua, Benacht, Agusgrev Mila Mahagov Galer. I'd like to thank the Taoiseach for his message and for his very inspiring words. I know how much this will be appreciated by all of us here on this very special day. And Adam, Adam being so far away from family and friends at this extremely difficult time. Uh, For the rest of the programme, we will have a number of short videos uh, from the large range which I mentioned before. I hope you very much 
Enjoy these and I hope they'll encourage you to look at what's available from contemporary Irish talent online. On a sunny weekend last year, 41 children from Ork Dausa Dance Club became a choreography and film collective, dancing to the music of the Bothy Band in favourite places near their homes in Leitrim, Sligo, Roscommon, Mayo, Fermanagh, Longford and New York. Together, they have created this shared celebration. Hannigan and Loa's voices entwine around one another with bewitching harmonies in the spirit-lifting performance from the National Gallery of Ireland of Lisa's song, Undertow. I want to swim in your current Carry me out up and away I want to fly Every word you say Want to be underneath your weather Every cloud and ray of sun I want to float In between every one In between every I want to see down like a stone You never lost me, you never broke I want to be adrift on your radio Until 
In front of the marriage of Strongbow and Aoife in the National Gallery of Ireland, two peerless artists, Irlo Lennard and Steve Cooney, perform one of the greatest 18th century laments, Mayila Mar, by Sean Clark MacDonald. Yeah, 
shape of his given love. So Finish free. William Butler Yeats's timeless poem, Yearning for Communion with Nature, is recited by an exciting voice in Irish poetry, Nithi Kassa, who grew up in the Democratic Republic of Congo before moving to Galway in her teens. I will arise and go now and go to Inish free. And a small cabin built there of clay and wattles made. Nine bin rolls will I have there, a hive for the honey bee, and live alone in the be loud glade. And I shall have some peace there, for peace comes dripping slow, dripping from the veils of the morning to where the cricket sings. Dear midnight's all a glimmer, and noon a purple glow, and evening full of the linnet's wings. I will arise and go now, for always night and day. I hear lake water lapping with slow sounds by the shore, while I stand on the roadway or on the pavements a grey. I hear it in the deep hearts core. In conclusion, I'd like to thank you again for joining us for this first virtual reception to celebrate St. Patrick's Day in Copenhagen. And I hope you've enjoyed the short videos which you have just seen. More of these videos you can find on the Ireland.ie website and through the embassies, websites, and social media pages. 
I'd also, on a personal note, just like to say that while I hope you find this experience to be worthwhile and interesting, my own sense is that I hope this is the very last virtual reception that we will have to hold here in Copenhagen, because I very much hope that in the coming months we will be able to get together and interact in more personal and physical terms, um, and certainly we should be able to do that by the time we have St. Patrick's Day in March next year. And it just remains for me to say um, that I hope, I, I want to send my very best wishes to all of you and your family, wherever you may be, and keep safe and look forward to seeing you soon.